How to build the Blackgate's twin steam engine, part 16, making the main centre bearing. I've fitted the main drive pulleys to the engines and the belt, and as you can see the belt is a little bit slack. But don't worry, there's a reason for this. All will be revealed in the fullness of time. But the drive pulleys are looking a whole lot better. After the light machining operation that I showed in the last episode, the pulleys now look less industrial and more model-like. And you may have noticed the engine is really running well at the moment. I messed about with the timing of the cranks relative to each other and I fitted the tooth pulleys to the crankshafts and set the crank pins to be at 90 degrees to each other. Now I need to make the centre bearing block to support the main drive shaft which in turn holds the pulley that's driven by the engine. In this clip I'm drilling a hole 5 16ths of an inch in diameter down the centre of a square piece of brass bar. Please be aware that brass is not a suitable material for this bearing. Brass just wears out very quickly. At the moment it looks like I'm going to be using brass for the bearing. I'm silver soldering the piece of brass to a smaller piece of brass plate. And if you watch the silver soldering operation, as always, I wait until the flux takes on a watery appearance before I apply the silver solder. And as I apply the silver solder, you can see that the brass block moves on the brass plate. But while the silver solder is in the molten state, it's very simple to move the piece of brass back into position. After allowing the part to cool to black, I quenched it in water, and now it looks like this. After cleaning it up on my one-inch belt sander, it looks like this now. I will put this part in the acid bath to clean off the flux residue, but not yet. First of all, I need to make the bearing that's going to fit in the hole, and I'm using this stuff. It is horrible. It's phosphor bronze, and when I use phosphor bronze, I normally use the free cutting type, which is far easier to machine. As I was doing this job, I did it wrong, twice, before I finally got it right. And I'd like to say it was accidental, but it sort of was, it was 50-50. I wanted to make a video about the trials and tribulations of machining this type of very red phosphor bronze. And if you want to watch that video in detail, it is part 21 of Model Engineering for Beginners. Before doing anything at this piece of bar, and as you can see, it looks fairly bent because I do believe it's drawn phosphor bronze. I'm going to drill a hole halfway down the bar, starting off with a centre drill, followed by a 3 16 of an inch diameter drill. And as you can see, the part's getting very hot. Coolant is fairly essential for machining this stuff. I'm just using a lot of oil. I worked my way up the drill sizes until I got to one imperial size less than a quarter of an inch. And don't forget, I only drilled the hole halfway down the bar, not all the way down. I'm using a life center to support the open end of the bar, which is the furthest from the chuck. These clips are speeded up, by the way, I'm not turning at this speed. Once I turned the outer part of the phosphor bronze bar to 5 16 of an inch to fit in the brass block, I parted it off, turned it round in the chuck and started the drilling process from the other end. Centre drill first and going up the drill sizes as before. And this drill is the one that is one imperial size less than the quarter of an inch that I want it to be. I engaged back gear to slow down the chuck, but in this clip it's speeded up just to save time, and I'm reaming the hole down the centre very carefully. Although you can't really see in this clip, I'm using plenty of oil as well. Because the phosphor bronze bar is held in the chuck like this, it doesn't get as hot because the chuck jaws act as a heat sink. Really though, coolant is an essential part of engineering. When I go out into the world, I don't like to smell of lathe coolant, so that's why I don't use it. There's nothing wrong with using coolant, you can put it on with a brush, but really you need a coolant pump and it needs to go everywhere. But unfortunately, that includes splashing on the operator. So the experts out there, please don't inform me about the different types of coolant and all the ways of doing things in industry, because this is not industry, this is my small home workshop and I'm making a model steam engine. One has to keep a sense of perspective about these things. And the part appears to be not 100% true in the chuck, but it doesn't need to be for this application. You'll see why in a minute. I remove the part from the chuck, and then using the tailstock as a press, I press the bearing sleeve into the brass block. 
and here's a clip of the bearing sleeve fitted to the brass block. What I need to make next is the main drive shaft, but before doing that I'm just checking the size and the feel of this bearing using a piece of quarter inch diameter silver steel. I'm using silver steel because this is accurately ground, and the bearing fit is good, no rattle at all and it's not tight, I couldn't want for better. In this clip you will notice that I've cut a piece of this silver steel, which is the right length for the job. Here's a general arrangement, this will fit right in the centre between the two main drive pulleys. The centre part of the baseboard will be made from metal. Metal much thinner than the wood that I'm currently using. And the thickness of this centre space, a piece of metal, will determine how much pressure is put on the belt by this centre pulley. In reply to the viewer who wrote in saying that he was concerned that because there isn't much of a surface area of the pulley touching the belt it will slip. But as the pulley itself is the belt tensioner, this shouldn't occur. So please don't be concerned with that, it will all work out in the end. Because the engines are side by side, this will not take up much room in the boat, so it will allow for a much longer, larger boiler. This boiler, by the way, is far too small, it's just one I have in the workshop. One day I'll get round to doing a series about putting it together. That's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.